All right, thank you for watching. Um, behind me here is my uh, Florida beach towel, my Florida souvenir. Many years I've lived in Florida. I always enjoyed Florida, the beaches there and the salt, the salty air coming off the beach. I've always uh, really enjoyed breathing that. And I'm going to bring you a short little message today on Bermuda Triangle, which is just off the coast of Florida. And many people are infatuated with Bermuda Triangle. As a matter of fact, there's many triangles around the earth that have deep water. And we're going to get kind of like to the bottom of this subject. It doesn't matter which triangle that you're interested in, but we're going to go to the very bottom of the subject. And we're going to go to the deepest body of water on the earth. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use our Bible to study this out. And we're not going to use magazines. We're not going to use uh, newspaper clippings or or any video from television or anything like that. We're just going to stick with Bible, okay? And the deepest place, the deepest body of water on the earth is a gulf. It's a gulf of water. It's in the heart of the earth. It's between Abraham's bosom and the burning hell. And back in the Old Testament, before uh, Jesus Christ came up from the dead, Old Testament saints that had died, they went to a place called Abraham's bosom. And that's where they waited until Jesus Christ uh, was resurrected and he let him out. And on the other side of this body of water is hell. And in the context, we're going to look in Luke chapter 16, and we're going to look in verse 26. Here's a man that's been, uh, he's in hell, he's burning, and he wants a drop of water just to cool his tongue. And he's asking Abraham for this this water, and Abraham can't help him up, help him out. He's telling him there's a big body of water between us. And he calls it a gulf. And uh, all right, we'll look at that. Uh, verse 26, And beside all this, between, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Now, that body of water is in the deepest part of the earth. You can't get no deeper than that. That's way deeper than the Bermuda Triangle or any other triangle. I'm going to tell you now about a guy that went down there, okay? A man that went down there in his body, that actually went down there to hell, uh, to this gulf, and then came back up. Okay? And then I'm going to tell you what he said when he came back up. Okay? I'm going to show you this in the Bible. If you have a Bible, uh, we're in uh, the book of Jonah. And here's a guy that is in rebellion against God. And he's trying to get out of the will of God. And he's on a ship in the sea. And the people that operate this ship realize that they do not have God's blessings because this guy is in our ship. And so they basically take Jonah and throw him overboard. And God's prepared a, a, a well, a giant well. This well swabs Jonah whole. And Jonah's down in his belly. And now I'm going to start reading some scriptures about what's going on, okay? We're in Jonah chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou heardst my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep. And in the midst of the seas. And the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. He's deep in the water. He's, in, he's in the, inside this well in his belly. And he's down deep in the water. This goes on. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. And it goes, I'll skip a verse here to save some time. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. God used his will to take him down there to the bottom of the mountains and to the earth with her bars. I mean, He's at the deepest place on the earth. See, the earth is filled with artesian networks and bodies of waters. And, and I couldn't tell you how the well got down there, but it got down there. That well, uh, God basically used it like a heavy, extremely heavy-duty submarine somehow. But he took, he took Jonah all the way down to the gulf. Jonah's been exposed, and he comes back up. Now, what would you think a guy that's been down there when he comes up, what do you think he would say? I'm going to tell you what he said when he came up. This is his message. Verse 8, They that forsake lying vanities forsake their own mercy. 
It's kind of a strange message to say after you've gone down there. Well, here's what's going on with this verse. People that forsake lying vanities, uh, people that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. If you're involved with lying vanities, vanities are things that don't bear fruit. You don't even love yourself. You don't love yourself. See, a vanity is something that doesn't bear fruit. The Bible says iniquity is pulled by cords of vanity. Uh, vanities, you get your mind so full of vanities, you get so full that you don't have any room for Jesus Christ. And you know why you were created? You were created for God's purpose. Let me show you that in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Revelation 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You're created for God's pleasure. You know, people go out and try to win people to the Lord. They want newborn babies in Christ. You know how the, a doctor takes the baby out of the womb? He guides the head out first. That's the first thing to come out. A normal baby being born is guided out by the head. And applying that spiritually, you know, people can't get born again because they don't got any room in their head for Jesus Christ. They got their minds so full of lying vanities, they forsake their own mercy. The preacher preaches vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Thus saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Preachers preach against vanities. They try to get these things, they try to get these layers of vanities out of your mind so they can give you the good news about Jesus Christ and get you saved. And you know what? Also, if you're already saved, if you're already saved and you got your mind full of vanities, you don't have any room to serve. We're supposed to be walking in the Spirit and, and sacrificing daily and serving the Lord. If you get sidetracked with all these vanities, you don't have any room to serve Jesus Christ. You know, if you're lost, hell was not prepared for you. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. And I want to encourage you to consider trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior because if you don't, that place right there near that gulf, that burning hill, that's going to be uh, where you're going to go when you die. You don't want to go there. You want eternal life. That's what you want. You want to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Well, okay, this is a little food for thought. Uh, hope it's been a blessing to you for watching.